Okay, so we're doing something a little different this week. You know, usually I would cover IMs in my reviews, but um, there's another part that also contributes to the sound of an IM. Yep, today we'll be going through ear tips. These often glossed over, but no less important parts of your earphones. And they need some time in the limelight too. So in this video, I'll be going through the process of tip rolling as well as uh, how ear tips can sort of affect the sound of your beloved IMs in this, I guess, two-part, uh, I wouldn't call it a series, but hey, uh, there's going to be two parts. And this is part one of tips for your ear tips. Okay, let's go. So first, you gotta know about tip rolling. When I first came into this hobby, <laughs> I legitimately thought it was like you somehow had to roll your tips before putting it on your IMs. And I, I didn't know what that did at all. But no, si simply put, tip rolling is when you try a variety of ear tips on your IMs until you find the best balance of sound quality, fit, and comfort. Now, for fit and comfort, it, it, it's definitely subjective to the individual user, but there are generally three main variables that you can look out for. Uh, and that's usually the material, the size, and the profile of the ear tip. I can't say what's good for you, but I can tell you what's good for me. So for the material, I tend to find softer tips as the most comfortable as they can conform somewhat to my ear geometry better than tips with a hard material. A hard nozzle will also be less conforming to your ears and they can create fitment or possibly comfort issues. However, they may yield some sound quality benefits as will be discussed later. The size of the ear tips will depend on a person's ears and while you Whilst you can perhaps wear a size, it can't, no, no, it isn't necessarily the most comfortable. Perhaps a large ear tip fits your ears, but it may cause some pain. In this case, you should look for ear tips that offer in-between sizes, such as in this hypothetical case, a medium-large size, perhaps. And relating to the size is going to be the profile, or the shape of the ear tip. A medium sized ear tip can still feel like wearing a bigger or smaller size due to its profile. In my case, medium foamy tips, they tend to have similar diameters to the medium sized silicone counterparts, but the squared off shape of the foamies make them feel like they are bigger in my ears. Yes. Ear tips can change the sound coming out of your earphones. Think of it as a form of physical EQ. You know, differences in like materials, like say the material thickness, their hardness, the size, lengths, insertion depth, and the shapes of ear tips may all contribute to elevating or dampening certain frequencies or frequency ranges of the earphone which can result in a mild to even very obvious change in sound, which will affect your perception of the signature of an earphone. And I'm not gonna drop a, a physics lesson on y'all as well, don't worry, but I will report to you what I can hear and speculate on the phenomena which may cause them. And of course, how the sound changes according to which ear tips can also vary from person to person. So take these assessments as suggestions and general observations from my experience, not some kind of immovable rule that always applies neatly to every situation, okay? All right, so let's start with the material thickness. The thicker the silicone on the umbrellas of the ear tips, the more base is emphasized usually mid-bass though with some sub-bass boost as well. For example, a tip with a thin 
material like spin fits will usually make an IM sound more bass like than one with a thicker material such as, in this case, a pair of foam tips where the entire umbrella is essentially filled in with the foam material. Foam usually has a tendency to soak up the high frequencies as well, so take note of that, though this does depend on the type of foam used. The thickness of the stem material can also contribute to more or less bass. A thick stem can usually help make bass more present and vice versa. Though this is not as concrete as the umbrella thickness, and the opposite effect can also happen with regards to the stem. For the hardness of uh, the ear tip, it can also affect the sound, notably from what I've observed, the upper mids and a bit of the imaging ability. Uh, for instance, these tips that I poached from the FVO FH7 and the Setna ear fits, both the standard, light, as well as short versions, they have a stiff stem as well as a less conforming umbrella and this tends to exhibit itself in sound as sort of boosting the upper mid-range presence and slightly better positioning in musical elements. Going to the size of the ear tips, they also tend to affect the perception of bass, particularly in the amount of bass and its wideness, due in part to the ability of the ear tip to create a seal and just the sheer amount of material there are on the ear tips for the bass to sort of reverberate within. So yes, if you have small ears and have to resort to small, even like extra small sizes of ear tips, chances are you'll hear less bass, which will require EQ to compensate, whereas people with bigger ears may only need their big pair of ear tips to hear an adequate amount of bass. Though, inversely, if your ears are too big, the ear tips may fail to create a seal in your ears, resulting in the loss of low-end frequencies. The nozzle size will also affect bass, treble, and even imaging. I find that wide-bore ear tips tend to have less bass, but they also have less peaky treble spikes and a looser imaging, whilst narrow bores kind of do the opposite. They tend to tighten the imaging capabilities and increase bass but introduces some shimmering to the treble which may or may not be welcome. If you go too far and make like super small nozzles though, like that of uh, mature ear tips, you get a super bassy signature with little in the way of imaging and muted highs, so mm, not, not for me. Now the length of your ear tips can also affect the perceived sound stage, possibly this could be due to the distance created from the driver of the earphone to your eardrums itself. Something like Setna Earfits with its really long stems tend to make for a soundstage that is marginally wider than with tips with short stems, such as those from like these Galaxy Buds Plus and like other TrueWaz IMs with their like extra short uh, length. For insertion depth, it's also a bit constituent to tip length. It's the depth that you, uh, at which you insert the ear tips into your ears. Usually, a deeper length can mean a deeper seal, which can increase the bass. I have to admit though that I am not fond of deep insertion tips such as like double and triple flanges, but I have heard reports that this makes bass more prevalent but also smooths out some peaks in the upper mids and highs. For the shape of the ear tips, there's two things you want to take note of here, which is the shape of the umbrella and the shape of the top nozzle. This is also where things kind of vary the most. So I can only say that um, it affects the sound, but perhaps there aren't really a general sort of set of rules you can apply here, and the changes are usually very specific to the ear tip that you are addressing. But you can see that there are a few types of shapes that can be implemented into the umbrella. First is the standard uh, oval shape, or I guess a half circle shape, 
you will see this in Stinfits, Sony Hybrids, Final Type E's, Acrostone tips, uh, Moondrop spring tips, and most general types of ear tips. But for foam ear tips, you'll often see that a more squared off profile is used, as can be seen on uh, these foamies. And of course, how could we forget ear tips with multiple flanges as well? And there's also the radius deep mount ear tips with their kind of bulbous shape. I don't have those tips, so here's some pictures of them, I guess. Don't have them, so I don't know what they'll do to the sound. Uh, now it comes to the shape of the nozzle, which can affect imaging and sometimes dynamics. For example, uh, you can see that the common spin fit has a pretty sharp nozzle, whereas a Final Type B and a Sony Hybrid, they sort of have a taper at the top of the nozzle. And I generally notice that the more tapered or less sharp the nozzle is, they offer uh, a bit looser imaging than those of the sharp nozzles. Uh, maybe a bit of a warmth added to the sound as well. The most tapered of shapes is the nozzle shape of foamies. And these are also kind of big. Uh, for me, they sort of make imaging and positioning too loose, so also not a fan of that. There's also stuff like KZ Starlines, which have some grooves on the outside of the nozzle. This helps allow uh, some air to exit from these gaps, so it sort of breaks the seal a little bit, but not by much. But it can help alleviate some problems with uh, pressure buildup in the air uh, in the ear if you have such a problem or with like IEMs that have sort of ina inadequate venting. And then there's stuff like the JVC spiral dots with some dots inside of the stem itself. Uh, they tend to blur imaging a little bit in exchange for a smoother sound from my experience. And of course, there's a lot of other ear tips in the markets that I probably haven't gotten to cover because maybe I don't even know they exist. But yeah, there's a lot of ways to sort of uh, modify and 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 change the form factor of an ear tip, right? And you'll just have to find that out when you have it. And at the end of the day, whilst I have tried to isolate the variables in the ear tips, which may change the perceived sound signature. Please note that these elements, they tend to work in tandem. And so not every change is resulted from a single cause, but rather a combination of multiple factors. This creates a myriad of ear tip types from many manufacturers to try and suit the ears of everyone. So please don't be alarmed if my descriptions are different from your own. After all, ear tips are definitely one of the more subjective parts of audio. Trust what your ears say to you, and experiment with tip rolling for the best results. Now hopefully, my dive into the world of ear tips will have given you some insights on how they may change the sound of an IEM, and how they are a no less important part in your setup. I'll also attach a document in the description which will give some details about the individual ear tips, their fit and their comfort for me, what IEMs I tend to pair them with, as well as how they change the sound. They should include some of the most popular tips in the market, and I will try to update them with more entries in the future. So check back on this video once in a while for that. And you know, now that you're caught up on how great and interesting these little silicone thingies are, join me next week in part 2 as I compile and present some modifications you can do to your ear tips to hopefully make them even better for your usage cases.